Hey guys, my name is Tom, and in this devlog I'm going to rebuild the server's rollback system, and I'll finally be attempting to implement client prediction, which is something I've been avoiding for weeks now. It's around 9 o'clock on Wednesday evening, and I've just finished replacing the bulk of the rollback system. If you haven't watched my previous devlogs, or you're just unfamiliar with the term, a lot of real-time multiplayer games use systems that essentially roll back time to adjust for varying latencies amongst users. Basically, when the server receives an input from a player, it will come with a timestamp of when the input was sent. This allows the server to calculate how much time passed since the player actually pressed the key, and it can subsequently account for that gap in time. This is done by having the server store the world state for the past few ticks, which allows it to revert back to a given point in time, execute whatever actions need to happen based on the player's input, and then jump back to the present. Systems like this help reduce the advantage that players with fast connections have over those with slower connections, which is especially critical in situations where two players shoot at each other at the same time. Just because someone has a faster connection and their input message reached the server first doesn't mean that they should always win in those situations, and while it's not perfect, rollback architecture helps compensate for lag. If that explanation didn't make much sense or you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link to a great article which helped me understand this stuff in the description. Anyways, last week I realized that I severely overcomplicated my rollback system, as if this topic wasn't complicated enough as it is. Not only was my code a headache to look through, debug, and modify, but it was also extremely inefficient because I was making the server re-simulate everything between the present and the time that the input occurred, so I've been working on rebuilding it. There's some important parts missing which I still need to add, but the problem is that it's really hard to test a system like this without already having everything else in place, so there's roughly a 99% chance that I'll be running into plenty of bugs and errors over the next few days. I'm glad I've made as much progress as I did though, especially since I had a tough time getting started. This stuff requires a lot of thinking, and I often find myself writing some code when I realize there's a much better way of doing it. Then I go back to thinking, and because I feel like I'm not making progress, it becomes a lot easier to get distracted with other things. On the bright side, I managed to get a good start planning the next video. Several people have asked me how I made my boat float, so I thought I'd share that. My original goal was to not make a tutorial this week because those take a lot of time and it's pretty unexciting work, but I'm now doing that after all. This is partially because simply explaining how I did it would take at most 2 minutes, and that just feels like it's too short. I also did some research, and it seems like most of the tutorials about boat physics are quite old, so I think I have a good chance to rank and search for some really nice keywords. The great part about this is that while playing around with a test project for the video, I actually managed to improve my buoyancy code so it produces much better results. The mechanism behind it hasn't changed, but I made a rather small tweak which helps mimic real life buoyancy much better. I don't think I've ever been completely satisfied with how my ship behaves in the water, and I'm honestly not sure how I didn't figure this out earlier, but tomorrow I'll upgrade the buoyancy system and hopefully get that video to the point where all that's left is the editing. It's early on Thursday afternoon now, and the ship's buoyancy code has been upgraded. The previous iteration was a mess. It was way too bouncy, especially when sailing against the direction of the waves. Now the boat actually feels like it's floating, which is something I've been trying to nail down for a long time. I'll probably keep making tweaks to the values, but for now this will be fine. I also forgot to mention that over the weekend I added some stars to the skybox, although to be completely honest, I'm nowhere near happy with how they look. The main issue is that they rotate as though the player could see both the north and south poles at the same time, which obviously shouldn't be possible. I remapped the skybox's UVs to match those of a sphere, but that causes the stars to scrunch at and rotate around its poles, which doesn't look nice at all. I'm honestly not sure if an actual skybox is the way to go. Rendering a plane in the distance and always keeping it in front of the camera could be an option, but at the same time I don't know if that would help solve any of these problems. My experience with skyboxes is far from extensive, so if anyone is more familiar or has dealt with these same issues, I'd love to hear any suggestions, ideas, and advice you guys have in the comments below. Anyways, I need to keep working on this weekend's video, so that'll probably be it for today, and possibly tomorrow. It's just before 2pm, and I finished up the rollback system. There were a few issues I had to sort out with the circular queue I'm using, but it seems to be working now. I still haven't accounted for the jump in time when something is spawned after the server is rolled back, but I'm going to do that later. The only time sensitive input at the moment would be shooting a cannonball, but if I sort out the time jump stuff now, I might end up putting together a system that isn't very reusable. Once I have other time sensitive inputs, like melee attacks, it'll be easier to build a modular system which works in multiple situations. Since I'm leaving that for the future, I think it's about time to take on client prediction. This is something that I've been avoiding for a long time now. Initially because I was using Beppu physics on the server side, and having two different physics engines on either end makes it even more difficult, but I can't use that as an excuse anymore now that my server is in Unity. 
As I've avoided client prediction over the weeks, I think it's sort of become this looming task that's in front of me, while in reality it probably won't be much harder to implement than server rollback. I'm going to do a quick refresher and reread a few articles about the subject just to make sure I do this effectively, and then I'm going to jump in. A few hours have gone by, and so far I've copied the server's colliders over to the client project. That didn't take too long, but along the way I discovered an extremely strange bug which I'm fairly certain is related to the rollback system. Basically, when I click the left mouse button the server rolls back to accurately handle the input, but it almost seems like the server doesn't jump back to the present. If I spam click, it actually gets really bad and the player starts flying all over the place. Okay, so it's 4 o'clock now, and last night and for the better part of today, I've been trying to solve a similar issue. I managed to fix the problem where clicking caused the player to freak out. It turns out there was another issue with my circular queue, so the rollback system was rewinding to the wrong state. However, there's another issue that causes similar symptoms. Seemingly at random, the player will start snapping around. Since I never noticed this before I switched out the rollback system, I tried disabling that completely, but it kept happening, so the problem seems to be unrelated. As far as I can tell, the client tick sometimes falls ever so slightly out of sync with the server, and this causes sudden changes in timing for my interpolation code. I'm pretty sure this is actually purely client side, although I've only noticed it happen to the player object. If it really was all client side, then I don't see why it wouldn't be happening to the ship as well. Then again, I haven't been paying very close attention to what the ship is doing, so maybe I just haven't noticed it. As you might be able to tell, I'm pretty confused. The last few hours have been frustrating, and it feels like I haven't gotten anything done. I think I'm just going to go ahead and implement client prediction, and maybe that'll take care of the issue. That honestly seems like a terrible idea, because I probably shouldn't build client prediction on top of systems that still have issues. It feels like I'm about to build a house on a broken foundation, but I just need to focus on something else for a while. It's 8.38pm, and I've just implemented the actual prediction part of client prediction. This just means that the client now also calculates its own movement without waiting for the server to send a position update. Since I haven't implemented any kind of reconciliation for when states received from the server don't match what was predicted, the client currently has full control over the local player. Reconciling incorrect predictions without the player noticing a clear teleportation is going to be way more difficult. Before I can start working on reconciliation, there's something that needs to be dealt with. Currently, the client's predicted position diverges from the server's version extremely quickly. Even on a completely flat plane, the two don't match for very long. I'm pretty sure this is because inputs are being handled slightly differently on the server compared to the client. While the client samples inputs regularly, the server just applies them as it receives them, which means that it's possible for multiple inputs to be consumed in a single server tick. To get around this, I've added a bit of input prediction. It's nothing fancy. If the server receives an input packet telling it that the player is pressing a key, it will assume that the key stays pressed until it receives a packet saying otherwise. This makes it possible for the server to sometimes apply input over the course of more ticks than the client does, which I think is what's causing most of the divergence. Before I keep working, I just quickly want to mention that I set up a Kofi page today. If you've never heard of Kofi, it's sort of like a virtual tip jar. The premise is that you can buy your favorite creator as a coffee. Monthly subscriptions are an option as well, so in that sense it's similar to Patreon. However, I do want to make it very clear that there's not any kind of expectation for you guys to leave a tip. It's a particularly weird time to be asking for money, so I definitely won't be pushing this often. I'll probably mention it in a tutorial at some point, and maybe at the end of the occasional video. Watching my videos all the way through and leaving likes and comments is already a huge help, and the concept that anyone would want to support me financially is absolutely wild to me, but for those of you that have asked about ways of doing just that, now you can. I'll leave a link in the description. In case anyone is wondering why I chose Kofi over something like Patreon, it's because Kofi just seems more relaxed. Patreon is very much focused on tiers, perks, and premium content, but I want to focus on my game and making videos for YouTube, not content to stick behind a paywall. That being said, I've set up a special role for supporters on the Discord server, along with a private channel as a small extra thank you. And if anyone has any other suggestions for perks, let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear them. Anyways, in order to make the server process inputs the same way the client does, I think I'll have to run the server in the past compared to the client. The other option is to go back to my previous rollback system, but that has its own logistical problems which are even more difficult to deal with. I'm not entirely sure how exactly this is going to look, but I'm fairly certain that the way to go is to set up an input buffer on the server. I don't have too much time left today, but I'm going to get started on this and hopefully finish it tomorrow. Last night I managed to put an input buffer in place. The server now runs in the past compared to the client, and it stores any inputs that arrive in a buffer. 
From there, before calculating player movement, the server will check the buffer to see if there's an input that should be applied for the tick that's being executed, and if there is, it applies it. The clients and servers representations of the player now diverge a lot less, and it happens much slower too. It's obviously not perfect, especially when the player changes direction very suddenly, but with consistent reconciliation it should be fine. I also changed how the server player's position is represented. Instead of an ugly box, it's now a slightly less ugly pink, semi-transparent capsule. Apparently, the client's player is also able to jump extremely high sometimes, which is something I'll need to investigate. However, this video is getting quite long already, and I want to get reconciliation in place before I end it, so I'm going to get started on that right now. It's 4.30 on Friday now, and I have some unfortunate news. I've been trying to get reconciliation working, but it's just not there yet. I knew it would be difficult, but even so I definitely underestimated it. Right now I'm facing a problem where for some reason my reconciliation code is overdoing it, so then it has to reconcile in the other direction. When it has to do that on two axes, it's actually possible for the client's player to go into orbit around the server's representation of the player, which is definitely not what I want. I was really hoping I'd be able to get this done today, but it's already quite late and I need to start editing this video. Hopefully I'll be able to fix up reconciliation so that it's working next week, but that's going to have to be it for this devlog. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smack the like button and let me know in the comments what perks you'd like to see for Kofi supporters. I haven't entirely decided what I'll be working on in the next devlog, but with client prediction nearly done, it'll be something less technical and more interesting. Possibly PvP. If you'd like to join me on the rest of this development journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you're always informed when I upload something new. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.